I remember, um, I think a little bit after I was born, she went to a psychic. Um, I think it was uh, it was some famous person's wife or something. I forget the name. Jay Leno. I think it was his wife. And he, uh, she went into the psychic and she talked to talked to her about me, about me being born. And she talked to, she said about me being something uh, of a moon child and stuff. And you know, she's been in mysticism and all that type of stuff. She's always been around that. And she shared it with you? Yeah, she shared it with me through, you know, my whole life, and I didn't... How did you feel about that? I felt great, you know, I mean, as a kid, you know, you don't really quite understand it, because, you know, you're, you're so wrapped up in, you know, societal world about your friends, and you go, oh, my mom's telling me about crystals, and they're like, you know, they don't really, they don't really resonate with it, but it was just a really cool really cool experience to be around and then when you finally see more and more of that and I, with the age of the internet you know the information going around so quickly it just you know kind of impacts you that you know wow this has always been around me this has always been a part of me I've always been a part of who I am but I mean I, I knew it, it started mostly when my mom would talk to me about you know me being a triple cancer when I was born so it, it, which I've, I've told people that and they're like that's like hitting the jackpot you know all three rows and it's you know it definitely showed me that you know I'm here for a reason, and there's something, there's a there's a reason for this, and there's a purpose for all this synchronicity and all this stuff. So you feel as well as you're here for a bigger purpose. Yes, very much so, and not and not just that, but I don't want to say separate, but no. I, I was always you know going in a different path, so to speak. I remember being young. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't always hang out with my friends, not because I didn't want to, but because they just wouldn't seem to be on my level, not to be egotistical, but um, I would always hang out with my dad's friends who were a lot older. And before the word indigo came up, it was more the word, the term was being used was old soul. It was a, it was a lot because I'd be going with my dad and his friends, and I'd be talking to his friends, they'd be saying, how old is this kid? Like, he sounds like he's, you know, 27, 28, you know, talking to grown adults. And I was just trying, you know, I just wanted to be around people. And people who are my age just didn't seem to get in the same area. But with the old soul, um, it, it went from that, and then it went to Indigo Child, who is who is here more to um, more to tear down traditional structures that were put in place. That you know that this is how you do life, and this is the 2.0 system. You, you know, and that's not how life works. Not that's not always how it's going to be. So what if I shared with you that your mom? <clears throat> Your mom is a Blu-ray. A Blu-ray. And she has indigo tendencies and which overlaid to you an indigo Blu-ray crystal. So I would say, child, but I don't like that word. I like to call you guys young adults. And what if I tell you your past life came from Vietnam? So it was as though you reincarnated because your life was stopped short as a young man and you decided to come in as a man again this time. But this time you have the complete peace and freedom and that's what you're here for is harmony. And and you want to live this life out the way you in, intended in peace and harmony. So that resonates a lot. There we go. I, mean, I, I, I remember hearing the human beings are like at, at their stage in evolution, if you put an average human's lifespan in the in the stage of a human being or the human species we are we're right at or after the stage of um, adolescence which i think is beautiful i mean look look what we've done we we got a little crazy you know in the first few areas we got a little we started tearing stuff up but we didn't crash the car we didn't you know i, I think that's that's awesome you know we didn't crash the car we got we got everything fixed we fixed our and we're starting to realize we're starting to awaken and we're starting to realize, you know, that we can, we as each other can help us out. There's no, there's no, uh, nothing to be afraid of except for fear itself, except for the fear that holds us back, that, you know, is afraid to do, to do what we know we need to do. I read, I read a quote today by Marianne Williamson, one of my favorite authors. I, I read a book by her that was really great. Um, she said along the lines of, um, our um, our greatest fear is in our darkness. It's our light. It's it's our it's our afraid that we are powerful. That we all that we know 
that everything we have that we can achieve ourselves, that we have the, the strength of the light inside us and we have the strength for, to, to go and change the world and that it's on us and that we have to be responsible as a species, as a race, as, as people. And it's, it's, it's not, it's not going to happen overnight, but it starts with, you know, a small act of kindness, you know, a random act of kindness, you know, showing that, you know, there's still, there's still light, there's still, there's still hope.